and this is number one, the Star of Minnesota. This piece I did, uh, Minnesota is known for its winters, but I wanted to bring all the color forth of this too. So this is made out of clear, iridescent glass that shows all the color of the northern lights. And here is number two, gravity, as this whole group of people defy it. Notice they are grounded to the earth from their heart. This piece, I visited the garden almost a year ago and noticed that these beautiful Carl Forster gra uh, grasses grow to a very specific height and then stop. And then they make these seed heads that are absolutely beautiful. And they're in a champagne color, just as is this glass. So my hope is that as the grass grows up, you'll see these joyful human figures lifting from it. This is number three, the road to Provence. I haven't been to France yet, but when I'm due, I hope it feels like this. This one, standing almost 10 feet tall, is the golden chain tree. Horticulture buffs will know this tree is laburnum and that it is marginally hardy. I grow one in Michigan and it limps along just like they do here in Minnesota. But this one will bloom for many years. Here are numbers five and six, Big Fish One and Big Fish Two. There are two of these. Uh, I work with my dear friend Jim Cunningham on the stainless steel one. And this is stainless steel. You wouldn't want to use copper or bronze in a place where there are fish because it leaches copper, which is toxic to fish. So my friend Jim and I knew we were going to do a fish for a show I did at Michigan State University. And we were arguing over who was going to do the fins. I said, no, I'm going to do the fins. And he said, no, I'm going to do the fins. So this is the compromise. One of them has glass fins and a stainless steel body, and one of them has a glass body and stainless steel fins, so everybody wins. Here's number seven, Making a Wish. The tallest piece in the collection, this tower is some 16 feet tall. Stainless steel and clear iridescent glass. Um, this piece is made to remind us of when was the last time we made a wish. This piece is the lilac. Using three shades of lavender and purple glass, there are 114 handmade glass flowers, each that weigh two days to make, and stainless steel stems. The delight for me in making and bringing the lilac was as I installed this piece, the lilacs behind me were in full bloom. And as I assembled this piece, I could smell the lilacs, fooling even me. This is number nine, the crepe myrtle. This towering piece stands 14 feet tall. There's almost four foot of it in the ground holding it up, too. It uses red glass, one of the trickiest colors to use. Uh, I fire this to about 1,465 degrees, and if I'm five degrees too hot, uh, the glass will go brown. There's quite a bit involved in a piece like this. The stainless steel is welded with my good friend Jim Cunningham. This is number 10, the weeping willow. Uh, I was so fascinated by the beauty of that gold, yellow, and green that they are in the spring. So this is my idea uh, of a painting, kind of like the Monet painting was my inspiration on this. The frame on this one, my original plan was to do this in bronze. I thought it would be beautiful, and then I realized, uh, talking to my metal guy, that the bronze is going to cost $7,500 for the frame alone. So the frame on this one is actually made of cop copper that I uh, sweated together myself, and then it is coated in bondo and card. This is number 11, the hydrangea. I was looking at a beautiful blue hydrangea uh, one day, and I realized how much it looked like fireworks. So I don't want my work to be just physical representations of a piece. I want them to be expressions of the piece. So I was trying to capture that essence of an explosion. Blue fireworks, so the hydrangea. This is number 12, the grape arbor. I love to collaborate with other artists, and I realized that the best kind of frame for a piece like this would be traditional wrought iron. So I called up my bud, Doug Thayer and gave him a simple sketch of what I was thinking and gave him the height of this piece and he pleasantly surprised me with this magnificent steel structure. Then we set to work making all the grapes and all the leaves. Uh, a little detail, the texture of a grape leaf has this nappy texture to the back. We did that in glass by taking chunks of glass and putting it through a garbage disposer to make little irregular chunks of glass. And look how it catches the light. And this piece, number 13, is the potted geranium. Uh, I love this piece for its color. 
It's a true portrait of a potted geranium. This is number 14, Blue Star Rising. A stainless steel frame made with my friend Jim Cunningham holds 40 blue glass spires. I hope it reminds you of the morning star. Here's number 15, the fireball. When I toured the gardens over a year ago, I knew I wanted to do a piece of fire for this garden. I noticed a wonderful sculpture about wind. Of course, the earth, our earth and the water. The only part of the quadrant missing was fire. These are the poppies of Oz. I bring you these direct from Florida. These poppies were made to help publicize the uh, Disney movie, the great, the great and Powerful Oz. So I had a field of these um, at Epcot for that movie. And here's number 17, the water garden. Blue tropical water lilies and white lotus behind a working fountain. Here's number 18, the rose blossom. This one is an homage to my mother whose favorite flower was the yellow rose. So here's to you, Mom. Number 19, the bird's nest spruce. This one's really a horticultural pun, even though it's in a fir tree. It looks like a spruce tree. And of course, there is a plant called the bird's nest spruce. So there are 20 some odd handmade sky blue glass tree, uh, bird's nest in this tree. Um, what I love about this piece is in different lighting conditions, on a blue sky, the bird's nests just disappear. They just become holes in the sky. This is number 20, the bonsai tree. It's made with mild steel that's uh, fabricated with the help of my friend Mike Magnata, another steel worker that uh, I love to work with. It's many pieces of glass, and it's an emulation of a bonsai tree just uh, blown up about nine feet in height. This piece, as with many of the pieces, has very different character in very different times of the day. Right now, it's simply blending in with its environment, and visitors may walk right by it. But when the light is behind it, it dazzles. Here is number 21, the Green Man. Uh, it's an ancient Celtic tradition. I bring him here to protect the garden. Here's number 22, October Gust. Living in Michigan, my favorite month of year is October. Very similar to what you have here in October in Minnesota. And this piece came to me as I was walking around last October and a gust of wind picked up a swirl of maple leaves in my backyard. And I wanted to capture that moment and bring it here. And this is number 23, the flight of the monarch. I wanted to draw attention to the plight of the monarch and their disappearing numbers with this beautiful piece. Uh, this piece was made originally uh, to display this winter at the Butterfly House at Epcot Center. This is number 24, a hosta dreams in flight. I'm a gardener myself and I collect hosta. I have uh, 2,000 plants in my home garden in Michigan with about 174 different varieties, so this one's uh, dear to my heart. Uh, there are, I believe, 25 or 30 handmade Hosta leaves that uh, are no particular variety, but they certainly play against uh, all of the ones that you see. And uh, I'm just imagining hostas are such low-growing plants, and I just imagined their envy of the trees. Number 25, the Japanese iris. Now that the Canadian geese have left their nest with their fledglings, I could use their island to plant the Japanese iris. Number 26, the loon, the state bird of Minnesota in all their majestic glory. An incredible stainless steel made by my friend Jim Cunningham. The detail work on these pieces is astounding. There are thousands of hand-cut pieces of glass that form the wings. The welding on the steel was over a week for each of them. And even the red eye, if you catch the light just right, looks back at you. Number 27, the apple blossom. The apple blossom is the state flower of Michigan. So every show I do, whatever state it's in, I bring the state of Michigan's flower to you. This is number 28, the wisteria. I love wisteria. If you leave me alone, I will always make everything in blue. So wisteria really are purple, but in my mind, they're blue. 
So this piece shows the nature of the work that you can see in this one, that each wisteria is made of dozens and dozens of hand-cut pieces of glass. If you visualize them as brush strokes, you'll understand what I'm up to. Then it's plumbing copper that I bend into the coils of wisteria, drill and attach each one like a chandelier. This is number 29, Wave Press. Uh, this is a combination of stainless steel done with my good friend Jim Cunningham and the glass is meant to emulate the crashing feel of water. If you look closely at this piece, you'll see that it's made of hundreds and hundreds of hand-cut pieces of glass laid out in the shape of a splash. And here, number 30, is Tropical Splendor, an exuberant bouquet of Bird of Paradise, Anthurium, Croton leaves, and a split-leaf philodendron. This piece, almost seven foot tall, needs the light to bring it to life. And finally, number 31 is a question of balance. I swear part of why I did this piece was to help me get over my fear of heights. It's made of multiple pieces of glass, all cabled from the ceiling in the magnificent Great Hall. Number 32, the Hollyhocks. This piece soars some 14 feet tall for the tallest one of lavender and iridescent glass Hollyhocks with bright yellow centers. I hope they delight you.